Hi guys, welcome to Jeanette and Her Puzzles. Today I'm gonna show you my entire jigsaw collection and since last year it has grown so much that I have no place to put puzzles anywhere anymore. Like they are under my bed, they're in my closet, they are on the shelves and they are on the floor. <laughs> so they're literally everywhere. And when I was getting ready for this video I wasn't actually sure if I should sort the puzzles by theme or by puzzle brand because there's just so many of them and at the end I just decided I'm gonna do them by brand because I think it's just a little bit easier and also it makes more sense. I just want to say that there's over 60 puzzles if I count it correctly so I don't want to make this like an hour and a half long video so I'm just gonna quickly skim through all the puzzles I just want to show you what I've got. As you can see I already prepared my first brand which is gonna be Ravensburger but before I get into those puzzles, I just want to mention three that are not actually here with me because otherwise I'm gonna forget. So it's Cats in the Bookshelf, which is at my dad's, and then I've got Hogwarts and uh, Canada Day from Day to Night collection and the two are with my cousin. Also, there is another puzzle that I completely forgot about because my sister is working on it at the moment. So I have Wash Jig as well and the title of this one is Toy Shop. So these are the first three puzzles of my collection and now I'm gonna start with Ravensburger. So the first one is 300 piece puzzle and the title of this one is Sweet Dreams. I've had this one for a really long time so I have no idea what happened to the box but I already assembled it, really pretty puzzle. And yeah, that's the first one from Ravensburger. So the second puzzle is a 200 piece puzzle and the title of this one is Mixtape. I just bought this one recently and it's a really quick and easy assembly. So it was literally just to relax a little bit, just for fun. But if you've been with me for a while, then you know that me and my sister, we love exit puzzles. So I've got three of them, two of them we've already done. So we've got one more to do and let me show them to you now. So the first one is the Witch's Kitchen. Then the second one is the Forbidden Basement. And the third one that we haven't done yet is the Curse of the Wolves. And all of the exit puzzles have 759 pieces. Doing the big account first and then we're gonna swap to the others. Up next is a 500 piece puzzle and the title of this one is Ingenious Eyes. So this one was one that was almost a test run for the competition that we're gonna be doing. But I haven't actually put it together yet so still needs to be done. The next one is also 500 pieces and this one is Waldorf Astoria Hotel, New York, 1930. This one has already been assembled in my first black and white puzzle. It was not that hard, but definitely if this was a thousand piece puzzle, I would not be attempting to do it, I don't think, because there's just too much white. The next one is also 500 pieces and this one is called Q Dogs in the Garden. So this puzzle was bought specifically to do speed puzzling competition with Donna Louise. And yeah, I'm slightly nervous about doing it, but we'll see how it goes. So the next puzzle is the one that scares me the most out of my entire collection, because it's literally the only solid color puzzle I have. It's a 654 piece pink crypt puzzle. So I haven't done any of the crypt puzzles before. Some people really tend to enjoy them. I'm not that keen on single color puzzles, so I have no idea what's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna try to figure out what's the best tactic for this puzzle. And I'm already, you know, getting ready for it a little bit because I know I made a promise I'm gonna do it this year and I definitely will. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna be okay. I think my tactic is gonna work. <laughs> now I'm gonna move on to 1000 piece puzzles. There's quite a lot of them, so I'm just gonna quickly show them to you. The first one is Mediterranean food and this one is quite recent and I haven't done that one yet. The next one is Magical Student Harry Potter and I got this one for my birthday like two years ago, already assembled it, loved it. The next one is Woodland Day and this one was exchanged with another puzzle with missing pieces. So there's one piece missing with this one and also have already assembled this one. The next one is called Nuremberg Reflections. And I got this one from a flea market not too long ago. Haven't assembled it yet, but I think it's gonna be quite easy because it's got very specific sections. The next one is Yellow Taxi, and this one is from Gloss Effect Collection. I already done one puzzle from the Gloss Effect Collection and I really liked it, so I'm really looking forward to putting this one together. Up next is Maritime Souvenirs. I have exchanged this puzzle and I actually haven't gotten to do it yet. Probably because it worries me a little bit, there's quite a lot of, you know, same colour. I'm not gonna say I'm dreading it, but I'm just, you know, delaying it a little bit. <laughs> Wanna do the easy ones first. 
The next one is from James Ritzy collection and this one is called Times Square, Everyone Should Go There. So when I exchanged this puzzle I was actually really worried about it because it's so chaotic but then the girl told me that it's not actually that bad because obviously you've got the frame around which is going to be quite a big chunk of the puzzle and then you've got people so you see in which direction the pieces are turned. Still haven't done it probably with the same reason as the last one because I'm a little bit scared of it but I will definitely get to do it probably quite soon. The next one is AS Rock Australia and I've actually done this one, I made time lapse out of it and it was a really enjoyable puzzle until I got to the bottom section, like this bottom section was a nightmare <laughs> but everything else was quite fun to put together. And the last thousand piece puzzle in Ravensburger collection is the one that I just got recently for my birthday and this one is called Jokul Sarlon Iceland. I'm really sorry about the pronunciation, I'm sure it's completely wrong, but oh my god, I'm in love with this picture. It's just like everything about this puzzle makes me love it. And this is probably one of the puzzles that will end up on my wall. Oops. <laughs> I really can't wait to put this one together. And now moving on to the larger card puzzles. So the first one is a 1500 piece puzzle and the title of this one is Cottage in England. So I've already assembled this one, it wasn't too bad. I don't think from my personal experience that there's that much difference between a thousand piece puzzle and a 1500 piece puzzle. Like for me from 2000 onwards gets like way harder. It was quite easy to assemble, it's got very specific colours and also it's Ravensburger so it's got very specific shapes which always helps when putting the puzzle together. The last Ravensburger puzzle I have for you is actually also the largest puzzle of my collection and it's a 3000 piece puzzle and the title of this one is Tigers in Paradise. My sister bought this puzzle for herself and she's already assembled it and then she divided it into four bags of like 750 pieces and she gave it to me now. So I'm still waiting to put this one together because I asked you guys and you said it's better to do the entire puzzle together because it's a completely different experience. So this puzzle is still waiting for me to move on my own because then I'm gonna have more space and I can just, you know, leave it out. A little bit scared of this one because the largest count puzzle I've done is 2000 so when I do this one this one is gonna be the largest puzzle I've ever done so yeah definitely worried about it so this was the Ravensburger pile which is the largest pile of my collection and now I'm gonna you know just set up the next pile so the next puzzles I'm gonna show you are gonna be the wooden puzzles and obviously they're not gonna be all from the same puzzle brand but I just thought they fit together. So the first one is 500 pieces by Cross Strategy Products and we don't really have the title. I just call it a safari puzzle and I think this was the first puzzle I assembled on my YouTube channel so still keeping this one because I've got plans with it. The next two puzzles are from Woodbests and they gifted me those puzzles and also gave me a discount code so if you put Jeanette 15 in it you can get 15% discount. So the first one is 326 pieces size L and the title of this one is contrasting color challenge. This one has actually just two shapes in it so it's a really fun puzzle and I can't wait to actually get to it. And the second one is 759 pieces and it sizes extra large and the title of this one is yin yang. They had many different yin yangs but I really like that one because it's black and white you know it's just the proper one the one yeah. I just really like it and this one is also I think one of the puzzles that will probably end up on my wall. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to putting this puzzle together. I really like new wooden puzzles because they've got whimsy pieces and you know animals and all of that stuff. So it's definitely a completely different experience than just putting a normal puzzle together. And the last wooden puzzle I have for you was actually also gifted to me. It was my first gifted puzzle. It was my first experience with this kind of puzzles like with whimsy pieces and stuff so I really enjoyed it. And I'm gonna link all the details to their companies in the description box below. So and now we are moving on to Clem and Tony. I've got quite a few of their puzzles and I'm just gonna start with the first one. The first one is a 500 piece puzzle and the title of this one is Bray's Lake. So I already assembled this one, it was actually a really enjoyable puzzle to put together. The colours are so specific and you know Clementoni is a really good brand as well so very enjoyable. So the next one you might recognise from my first pit puzzling experience and this one is also 500 pieces and the title of this one is Penguins. So I've done this puzzle in a completely different way than I normally do puzzles so it's really hard to say how hard it actually is because I have no reference to compare it to. The next one is a thousand pieces and the title of this one is Flamingo Dance. I really like this one because of the colours. It does worry me a little bit also because of the colours but I think it might be quite enjoyable to put together so I'm quite looking forward to doing it. Up next is also a thousand piece puzzle and the title of this one is Four Seasons. 
So this puzzle has missing pieces, so I exchanged it with another one that also had missing pieces. And it was quite enjoyable to put together, but I'm finding it a bit frustrating with the amount of puzzles that I've got that have so many with missing pieces. So I think this one was my last puzzle that I exchanged with missing pieces. I'm not gonna be doing that anymore. So if I have any puzzles with missing pieces, I think they're just gonna have to go. So the next one is an impossible puzzle, and the title of this one is Marvel. So I'm definitely dreading this puzzle because it just looks like a complete chaos. I know that there's spaces on the picture which could help when putting the puzzle together because it kind of tells you which direction the pieces stand, but it's so chaotic that I'm still waiting to get enough courage to open it and start assembling it. Last but not least out of the Clementoni puzzle is a thousand piece puzzle and the title of this one is Mona Daisy. So I just got this one recently and I really liked it because it's just, you know, they combine Disney with Mona Lisa, so what's not to like about it? <laughs> I'm really looking forward to putting this one together even though the bottom section scares me a little bit because it is quite dark. So the next one is Prime 3D and all of the puzzles that I'm gonna show you I got from my friend who works for the company that distributes puzzles. So basically I've got the sample puzzles here and yeah I'm just gonna start with the first two ones which are basically both Harry Potter. They're both 3D and neither have a title. So I have done the Hogwarts one already but I still have to do the car one and I think it's gonna be quite easy to put together because the Hogwarts one was and this one seems even easier. So the next one is A Thousand Pieces and the title of this one is Stuck for Life Bunny. And this one is from collection Urban Art. So I haven't put this one together yet, the wall scares me a little bit, but I will get to doing it. I just hope that the bunny is like, takes up the majority of the puzzle, so then it leaves less wall for me to do. And then the next two puzzles are both from Stephen Brooks' Day to Night collection. And the first one is 1036 Pieces and the title of this one is Regatta Storica Venice. So I haven't assembled this one yet, but I think it's going to be the easiest out of the, you know, all the date night collections I had, because I had four, and I've got two left now. So the Canada Day was definitely the hardest one, and then the Paris one as well, because both of them had day to night coming from the bottom to the top, so basically the night was the sky, and you don't want that. So this one I think is going to be quite easy, because it's got like gradient in the sky. So the next one is 1008 pieces and the title of this one is Northern Gannets, Best Rock, Scotland. So this one again, I don't think it's gonna be as easy as the Venice one, but definitely easier than Canada Day and Paris one. Just because of the sky, <laughs> I think that's enough. So anyone who has ever done a night sky, they know how hard that is. And now we are moving on to truffle puzzles, and at the moment I only have two of them. And the first one is actually from the Spiral Puzzle collection, it's got 1040 pieces, and the title of this one is Magic Bay. So I've done this puzzle already, and it was such an enjoyable puzzle, it's just the colours, I just love it. Definitely a bit different than just doing a normal thousand piece puzzle. So the spiral effect, I think it helps a little bit when putting the puzzle together, because the pieces are even more specific, you know, you've got more different shapes. This one was kind of like preparation for the crypt puzzle, but because the picture is so easy, I didn't really have to search for, you know, the shape of the pieces that much. So I don't think that this helped at all to get me ready for the crypt puzzle. And then the next raffle puzzle is Funny Dark Portraits, also a thousand pieces. And this one was really fun to put together. I made it a bit more challenging for me because I did it square by square, but it was a lot of fun and definitely a puzzle that brought a smile to my face. So moving on to Schmidt puzzles now. And the first one is a thousand piece puzzle and the title of this one is not to be said. So I just call it Vamp and I have no idea in which language that is. <laughs> so. This one I already start putting together, so I've done the frame and I've done the arm and it just wasn't that enjoyable for me. I normally like Schmidt puzzles, but this one had like all ribbon grid cut pieces and the colours are just so dark, so it was not enjoyable for me, so I decided to give up on it and I'm probably just gonna give it away. And then the next one is also a thousand pieces and this one is called Aladdin. So this one is a Power of Dreams collection and I got this one from my sister for reaching 1000 subscribers and I put it together without seeing the picture and it was a really enjoyable puzzle. So this is probably the first puzzle after the 101 Dalmatian I had when I was a child that I want to keep putting together. <laughs> so like normally I just put a puzzle together once and then I'm kind of like okay we're never doing it again but with this one is like I want to keep returning to it so it's definitely gonna be a part of my collection now that never changes like I'm never swapping this puzzle. 
So I basically covered all the brands now and now I'm just gonna move to the last section which is basically like random brands and it's just one puzzle from each brand so I'm just gonna set that up now. So these are all, you know, mixed up brands now so I still divided it into three sections. So the first one is gonna be like the English section. The first one is a thousand piece puzzle by Cheatwell and the title of this one is the Colosseum Rome. So the finished size is approximately the size of a 500 piece puzzle so it's tiny. So I already assembled this one and it took quite a lot of patience for me to finish it because the Colosseum, like you could not see the detail on the pieces because they were like so small. So the next one is a thousand piece puzzle by Harry Potter and the title of this one is The Marauder's Map. This one has also already been assembled and it's such a difficult puzzle, like it's basically just two colours. So my eyes were literally burning when I was putting this puzzle together. So the next puzzle couldn't be more British, but I actually bought it in New York. It's a thousand piece puzzle by Lawrence King and the title of this one is The World of Jane Austen. So I found this one in a charity shop in the middle of New York and I have no idea how it got there, so if anyone knows please let me know. Last but not least on the English pile is basically a thousand piece puzzle by Robert Frederick and the title of this one is Transport for London. So I already assembled this puzzle and it's got a missing piece which is really unfortunate because it would be an ideal picture for me to put on the wall. So even if I make a piece it's not gonna look the same as, you know, just having all the pieces. The puzzle assembly was actually really quick until I got to the all white pieces and then that was just insanity. All ribbon grid cut pieces, it just, oh my god, it took me so long to finish this puzzle. So moving on to the American pile and the first one, I'm not actually sure if the brand is American but I bought it in America so works for me. <laughs> so it's a thousand piece puzzle by Big Puzzles and the title of this one is The Orient Express. So obviously me and my sister are gonna be doing this puzzle together because you know it's a mystery puzzle and we've already done the Glenmore Haunting which is also from Big Puzzles. It was very different to, to the exit puzzle but still fun to do so we are definitely gonna keep buying them. The next one is also Thousand Pieces by Remarks and the title of this one is 1950s. So I also bought this one when I was in New York and I just really like it because I think it's got like America written all over it. So I can't wait to put this one together because it's also a brand that I don't know and I want to see how it is. And the next one is also a thousand pieces by white mountain and the title of this one is movies so i got this one from my brother-in-law when he went to miami and i really wanted white mountain puzzles because there's a lot of people saying they're really good brand so i'm really really looking forward to trying this one out and the last one in the section i wasn't sure if i should put it between the english or the american pile because the brand is actually palette down which is in the uk but it's friends which is you know obviously american in new york so i decided i'm just gonna go with the picture so this one is also a thousand pieces by palette down as i mentioned and the title of this one is friends so now i'm gonna move on to the next section of this video and these are basically all mixed up brands that have absolutely nothing in common so I'm just gonna start one by one. So the first one is 50 piece Pringles puzzle by Wow Games and I got this puzzle as a joke. It was just for fun really. I don't really count these as like a proper puzzle because I've done it in like three minutes or something like that so it's almost like not doing a puzzle at all. The next one is 126 pieces by Puzzly Puzzly and the title of this one is Urbaniva Lobby which I think translates to Urban Waves. So this is also one of the puzzles that was recently gifted to me and they've got a really nice concept because they're putting people's art and making it into puzzles and all of the puzzles are handmade so that's definitely something completely different than any of the puzzles I've got in my collection. I'm also gonna link their details in the description box below. The next one is a thousand piece puzzle and the title of this one is Santa Claus. I literally have no idea what the puzzle brand is for this one. I cannot find it anywhere. I got this puzzle through an exchange. I started working on it and not good. <laughs> not a good quality, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm still thinking if I should keep going with it or just, you know, give it away. <laughs> So the next one is a thousand piece puzzle by Lupu and we don't really have the title for that one. It just says Duft Puzzle on it which means Scented Puzzle. I got this puzzle quite a while ago, I haven't done it yet because similar to the other puzzles that I haven't done yet, it seems a bit tricky because it's just two colours. So yeah, I am postponing it a little bit but there will be a time when I come to put it together because the puzzle has all different shapes pieces and also the cup I think is gonna take quite a lot of the puzzle away so I think it should be quite nice to put together actually. 
Up next is the Thousand Piece Puzzle by Bletz and the title of this one is Kittens. I got this puzzle from a charity shop and they didn't really have a lot of selection so I bought it because I just wanted a new puzzle. It does look quite hard so I'm gonna have to rethink my choices in the future when I see a puzzle like that because I think the cats are gonna be quite hard and then the background is basically just like a grim blob. The next one on the list is my frenemy puzzle and it has been featured on my channel quite a lot, not for a good reason. I have recently been contacted by the designer of the puzzle and he offered to send me puzzle puzzle 2 and puzzle puzzle 3. So we'll see how that goes <laughs> because <clears throat> yeah, this was torture. <laughs> Honestly, when I got his message, I felt a bit bad because I did say that this puzzle drives me insane and I want to throw it out of the window. But to be fair, the quality of the puzzle is really good. So I never ever once questioned the quality of this puzzle. It's just the picture. When he offered to give me Puzzle Puzzle 2 and Puzzle Puzzle 3, I had to instantly go and check them online before I say yes or anything. So. But they seem slightly lighter than this one. So yeah, we'll see what comes out of that. The next one is going to be a thousand piece puzzle by Innova Kit and the title of this one is Beautiful Paris. I got this puzzle through an exchange. I think it's going to be quite easy to do because it's got very specific sections, but I'm not really sure about the quality because I think I've only done one Innova Kit puzzle before and it was quite old, I think. So we'll see how it is, but I don't think it should be too bad to put it together. So the next puzzle I'm gonna show you is actually quite rare I think because when I tried to google it I found nothing about it and then I even messaged the company and I had no reply whatsoever so I have no idea what's going on with this puzzle if you've got any info please just write in the comments down below let me show it to you now it's a 750 piece puzzle by Museum of Fine Arts Boston and the title of this one is The Circus Lover I found this puzzle in a charity shop and it's actually the first puzzle that I came across ever it's a cardboard puzzle it doesn't have just like normal average shaped pieces so I literally have no details about this puzzle except what's written in the back of the box so I think I'm gonna have to find like a Facebook group that specializes in vintage puzzles and just pop it in there and see if anyone knows anything about it and now I'm gonna go get my 3D puzzles because they're puzzles as well so they deserve to be a part of my collection so I got all three puzzles for my birthday slash Christmas and all of them are Harry Potter themed so the first one is the wooden one from Yugi's and the title of this one is Hogwarts Express Mechanical Model so I'm a little bit scared of this one, I'm not gonna lie I think I've done a couple of wooden ones before but they were not mechanical so I have no idea how hard this is gonna be I know it comes with instructions so I just hope they're easy to follow and I think I'm gonna be putting the 3D puzzle together once I leave on my own because I'm gonna have space to display it. So the next two puzzles I'm gonna show you are actually a part of a bigger collection which is total of three puzzles and I've got two of them now so I'm probably gonna get the third one as well at some point. It's basically Hogwarts so I've got Great Hall and then we've got Astronomy Tower. So my sister said she wants to do that with me so we are probably gonna do Astronomy Tower together and I'm probably gonna do the Great Hall with you guys if you want to see how the 3D puzzles work because I don't remember. I opened it and I think it says something about like you need to do the 2D first, like on your own, no map. <laughs> and then once you do that, then you have some sort of map that you follow how to basically combine the pieces to get the right shapes. I have no idea what to expect. I've done one puzzle like this before. I think it was Big Ben, like around 150 pieces. So it's nothing compared to these. So if I'm not mistaken, I've got 61 puzzles as of today. And I started with 17 last February. So I have no idea what happened, but I've got way too many puzzles. Like I literally have no more space to put this puzzle anywhere. So I definitely have to reconsider what I'm gonna do with them. I think I'm gonna have to stop exchanging the missing piece puzzles. So I think that's gonna be like the first step to reducing my puzzle collection. I know some of you guys have like hundreds and hundreds of puzzles which is completely fine I would love to have that but I honestly don't have the space right now so I really hope this video is not going to be too long because I try to be as quick as possible but if you want to know more detailed descriptions about the puzzles you can always watch my puzzle hauls because there's less puzzle in each video and I've got more time to talk about each and every one of them so you can just watch it here. Bye!